this is what I find when I pull it out. What is up, original gangsters? OG out here with you today. Out at the range, the rain has stopped. Our range deck downrange is completely flooded, but I think we can splash through it a little bit. We're out here on a beautiful, sunny, Central Cali Uniformia day. Spent all morning on the phone with Apple support, trying to get my computer to reboot, reload some new software, and uh, so I can get to making videos again. But I've been a little sick, and while that computer is sitting there for the next several hours reloading, I thought I'd take this time to shoot out to the range I came out to fix a rifle that a buddy of mine had loaned me. His rifle won't hold zero. He's got a lower end LPVO type scope on a rifle and he said he can't get it to hold zero. I just pulled it out of the case. Here's what we see. So although I brought the appropriate torque screws for his scope mount up top because it felt a little bit loose. When I took it out of the case, I never even took it out of the case. I unzipped it, looked in here, found the right torque screws, zipped it back up and brought it out here with me. This is what I find when I pull it out. He's got a cantilever scope mount that is pushing the scope back. It's mounted on the rails. The rails out front are the shakiest, most unstable part of a rifle. You can see I've got this part pretty well firmed down. Look how much play that is right there. Never want to mount anything out here on the rails except for a light, hand guards, that kind of things, lasers. But anything that's an optic needs to be mounted back here on the receiver on this section. So I need to take this off. It also is backwards. This should be mounted here and pushing the scope out forward. Instead, it's mounting on the rails and pushing it back. So I need to remove this. And of course, I didn't come out to the range with the appropriate hex screws for this. I didn't know I was gonna be taking this apart, so we might be screwed on this part before we even get going. We've had a lot of steady rain here the last 24 hours. Our ranges are completely soaked in. I know for most of you, getting rain like that is pretty common. Here in Central Cal Unicornia, we hardly ever get rain. And so even though this is a sandy range deck, it is completely flooded. But that's all right. We're going to set up over there in the corner. And we have a pretty dry path walking up there. I know what you were just asking yourself. Where can I get a badass hoodie like that, OG? Right here in the merch shelf below this video. Duh. Here's a little tip from your uncle OG. Don't ever clean out your truck. I was just about to give up and move on over to shooting my own pair of rifles when I decided to root around inside the old OG truck and lo and behold, in one of the door pockets with a bunch of other drill bits and driver heads, I'm gonna find the perfect size hex wrench. The gods of shooting are smiling upon the OG. So the first thing I want to do is remove this cantilever mount, spin it around and mount it to the receiver. Should not be mounted out here on the rails. When we get it mounted to the receiver in the right place, we're also going to Loctite that little bastard down for Steve so that it does not move anymore. You can tell how high tech and expensive my equipment is. There's a little Harbor Freight Wrench I also found in my truck. Gets the job done. As you can tell, cantilever scope mount is designed to throw that thing forward. You can push it away from your eye. And if we mounted it on here, it's going to be too far back here, this direction. That's why it's not designed this way. It's supposed to go this way. 
So let's get that thing mounted on there the right way. Kids these days. Again, we're never gonna clown on anybody about low end gear because, hey, we're not going to Fallujah with this stuff. This is mostly protecting our homes. We're not gonna be in a running gun battle with Hell's Angels. For that reason, buy the gear you can afford. And again, maybe not all of us can afford fancy, fancy, high-end, aero precision, worn Leopold scope mounts. Maybe this is what we've got. That's fine. You gotta be able to use and fight with what you do have. I am uh, actually a big fan of lower end stuff as long as it works. Now over the years I've gotten to where I'll pay a little bit more for higher end gear because I don't want some cheap made in China stuff that's simply never going to work, but if it works, then let's do it. Korean glass is not bad glass. One to four power. It's a pretty decent little in-town scope uh, power. Okay, I don't have the shooter here with me, but I've adjusted to the stock to approximately where I believe it would be on him, roughly my size. I actually want to run this scope just a couple hairs back further this way. Not bad. Sometimes things just work out the way they're supposed to. I guess I'm in the elite class in California because I was able to go get my COVID vaccination. So, so now I just have autism. Pretty sure I had autism before this, so I'm not too worried about that. Nothing but the highest quality Chinesium Harbor Freight tools. Use them once, throw them away. And we are ready to put some ammo down range. So that takes care of our hardware issue. Now we've got to deal with the little dials here. Zero them out. We're going to put a target frame down range and we're going to put a couple of rounds in there just to see where in the hell this thing's printing. Make him look like Frosty the Snowman. But the most important thing is that we use Steve's ammo. Not a horrible trigger, but that round was about a foot and a half high. I'm going to be flat out amazed if we hit anything in there because it seemed like it was so far off and it's such a crapshoot. So the rounds are impacting way up here. Maybe you can see them there on the dirt bank. Not even close. We're going to dial that down and stop wasting ammo. Okay, so Steve's rounds were originally hitting about a foot high, two feet right. I spun these dials like a Wheel of Fortune contestant. No rhyme, no reason. No numbers whatsoever. Nothing would have made any sense. I just zzz, spot, spun them. Right now we're shooting almost dead center and about six inches low. Holy Lord, Steve, I think we're in there. So I just checked using the Chinesium spotting scope. One round, quarter inch right, one round, quarter inch left, one round dead center. That tells me that all of that other shit is shooter error. So I think Steve's rifle is now dialed in at 50 yards. I'm gonna give it five more rounds just to confirm. Zero on some of those other uh, dots. Take Steve's rifle over to the 100 yard range and confirm it at 100. 
This Bushnell AR223 reticle is a rather thick black post. So even at 50 yards, it more or less covers the little uh, one inch black dots that I drew on this target. So it's in there. It's just really hard to be precise with this, uh, with the reticle on this scope. So as I'm walking up now, I can see this was our, this is where I was after hitting the embankment back there. I spun the dials way down, ended up way up here, dialed it over and down. This was my third attempt. A little bit left, a little bit right, and one dead in the center. And just now, actually that was another one where I dialed it too low. Just now, five rounds, 50 yards, about the size of a quarter. Not all that bad. So, there you go, Steve O, 50 yards, you're scored away. I'm gonna take it over, dial it in at, 50, at 100 yards. So we dialed in Steve's rifle for 50 yards. He asked for 100 yard zero when I brought the rifle back. So we're gonna bring it out here to the 100 yard range now. And we're going to print some very quick rounds on paper, get him in at 100 yards. That'll do, pig. That'll do. My audio's jacked up because I uh, microphone ran out, but let me show you here. First five rounds, way too high. Dialed it in, pretty squared away, but goofy, big ass pattern, size of a soda can. Spent a little more time on this one. One, two, three, four, and five. So with that scope, that rifle, I'm fairly happy with that, at least for Steve. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me here at the range while I work on another guy's rifle. If you are not already subscribed, please reach down here and hit the subscribe button. Tap the little bell so that you get a notification anytime I put out a new video. Join me over on Patreon if you're not already a member over there. That helps out the channel a whole lot, buying ammo and other little chingaderas to shoot with here on the show. Thank you guys all for your support. You guys be safe out there. I will see you in the next video very soon. OG out. <laughs>